Folks, good morning, good afternoon. It is the Earthmaster back here on the Sunday, end of the weekend upon us. Uh, still got the day to enjoy though. It is Sunday, June 11th, 2023, about 12.02 p.m. here along the West Coast. The latest activity looks like some movement here off the coast of Mexico. Uh, we did just see that four-pointer coming in. Also a 3.5 here uh, around the uh, New Guinea area. Notice the globe here, fairly active. We did have some uh, larger earthquake activity overnight here near Japan, a 6.2 coming in. Way earlier this morning, it looks like about three o'clock in the morning or so, right into the Japan Trench here at 123 kilometers deep. It is uh, into the position right here in about the middle position here where the Kuril Kamchaka Trench and the Japan Trench uh, make that little bend. Also some activity up here into the Kuril Kamchaka Trench itself. So continue to watch this uh, potential segment of the Pacific Plate for some further movement. Uh, that 6.2, of course, not much damage due to the depth of the earthquake, which again was 123 kilometers deep. It is in a zone that does see some uh, deeper activity. Notice the uh, somewhat gray colored, dark gray colored circles here. Of course, up along the uh, subduction zone interface itself here where the strain builds up. That's where most of the large scale movement takes place. All right, over here around Alaska, a little bit of movement across the Aleutian Trench here from yesterday and slight uptick into the um, area around the um, Fairbanks area, well, just southeast or northeast, excuse me, of the Fairbanks area. Seeing a little bit of movement on this fault system called the Preacher Fault. Uh, not a huge segment, but uh, a little bit of activity kicking up on it today with a 5.0 coming in about 7 o'clock this morning. We have seen a little bit of uptick here across this area let me show you guys the last seven days of movement up here uh, notice this area has been swarming slightly uh, away from this plate or at least from this fault system here slightly uh, but seeing a little bit of elevated conditions there today again with that five pointer coming in looks like it was felt uh, by a few folks out here See what uh, we got 30 people in the Fairbanks area reported some light shaking out there across the map. Now I did pull up the historical data here. Uh, technically I just drew a, a rectangle here across this whole area for 6.0 and above and there's not a whole lot of earthquake activity at least above 6.0 in this area around the, the movement that we're seeing today. Most of the activity uh, in the years past to the northwest of Fairbanks. So uncertain as to what the capabilities are of seeing anything larger on this fault. Uh, it is, did strike at about 13 kilometers deep for that five pointer. We'll continue to watch this though. If uh, conditions uh, show some elevated swarming around here, we could be looking at maybe a little bit larger movement taking place there around the, uh, the uh, Yukon Flat, Flats area. All right, down south into the California region. A little bit of activity kicking up here across the Lake Almanor region again. Underneath the lake, a couple twos, 2.5. And uh, latest though shows a 2.3. A little bit of movement outside of Reno as well. Been kind of a trend bouncing back and forth here lately. Uh, the rest of California, one earthquake here on the San Andreas Fault from yesterday. Aside from that, uh, mostly microquake activity down here today. Salton Sea got a little bitty earthquake here off the Brawley Seismic Zone at 2.1. Let's see here what else we got. Oklahoma getting a little swarming going on here around the Union City area. Um, looks like about 13 kilometers west of Union City. Out in... Uh, well, I don't know if there's any oil fields out here or not, but we can sure take a look and see what's going on. Maybe a couple already. S well, I'm not for sure what that looks like. A, I don't know what that is. Maybe some type of farm. It's hard to say. Sometimes these oil fields out here are uh, covered up by the vegetation over the years. Uh, but either way, we got, uh, we got ourselves a little bitty swarm going on out here around the Oklahoma area, around the Union City region. So keep that uh, in mind. A couple twos out there, nothing big right now, but it is kicking up 
in the uh, multitudes. Right further down south into the South America region, got a little bit of activity kicking up here. It looks like nothing big. We are seeing some movement up here across the Middle America Trench, up here around the El Salvador region with a 4.4, that earthquake uh, coming in last night. But for the most part, uh, the larger scale movement been across the Western Pacific with a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity here. As you can see on the map across the New Guinea area westward and eastward as well here down uh, in the Fiji area. The latest quake, a super deep 581 kilometer deep, uh, 4.3. Also south here of New Zealand, west of uh, Macquarie Island, seen a 5.8 as well. That's going to be down here, South Pacific Ocean. Bouncing back and forth here, continuing to put uh, New Zealand on the map far as earthquake activity goes. Let's see if we got anything overnight. Uh, looks like movement along the Kermadec Trench here. Notice these fours kicking up. Nothing showing up here on the USGS map. I don't. Doesn't look like there's too much. Let me check the GeoNet servers here and see what we have. I'm just going to run over the drums here real quick. Get a good view. A lot of act a little bit of activity last night. That's going to be this earthquake here from. Uh, almost 24 hours ago but for the most part any large-scale activity looks like it's holding off for now across New Zealand uh, but again with this bouncing back and forth here of earthquake activity over the last week you know it's been more obviously more than this um, I'm sure you guys bring this up bunch of activity up here and more activity than normal down here in the South Pacific Ocean puts New Zealand right smack dab there along the plate boundary in the hazard zone we did see a couple fours uh, here around the, um, well, it's on top of the Hikirangi subduction zone, but uh, at the surface levels, 90, 93 uh, kilometers east, northeast of Castle Point, New Zealand. We'll continue to watch this area, though, for some, uh, some further large-scale movement. All right, uh, Big Island of Hawaii, aside from the Kilauea volcano, not a whole lot of earthquake activity going on. Uh, eruptive status there is continuing and the rest of the world here of course uh, a little bit of activity uh, across the Mediterranean Let's see what we got here for the map as we head on over here looks a little bit lighter today not a whole lot going on here mostly twos and threes a couple fours around Turkey uh, see if we got any more activity down into the South Africa region outside of Johannesburg doesn't look like it the one earthquake uh, shaking things up out there last night appears to be the uh, at least according to the usgs the only one in this area although looks like maybe the geonet servers is reporting a little bit of activity here a 3.2 uh, following that five pointer from last night all right uh, let's see what else we got here south sandwich trench one earthquake from yesterday 4.6 nothing else going on down there and the Puerto Rico area yeah, you know, looks roughly about the same as what it should. All right, uh, let's see here. Let's see if we're missing anything. Atlantic Ocean, uh, aside from the South Sandwich Islands, or South Sandwich Trench down there, uh, looks fairly quiet. We'll continue to watch, though, the Western Pacific over here with some elevated activity. That's a mess of movement. New Zealand right here in between X marks the spot. Also a couple areas up here around the uh, Loyalty Islands could see some further movement. All right, weather, space weather that is. Are we looking at anything spectacular going on? Doesn't look like it uh, overnight, so not a whole lot. It looks like some sea flare activity currently taking place right now, uh, but we are not looking at anything major kicking up from the sunspots. Looks like a lowered threat, 99% chance for C flare, M flare at 20, X flare around 5% chance. Um, let's check out the magnetic structure of these sunspots, which are just fading away. There's not a whole lot going on. I was hoping they'd look a little bit more complex this morning, this morning but uh, they're dying off very rapidly and there's not a whole lot of uh, movement it looks like around the eastern limb yet way over here maybe you've seen a little bit of the magnetic lines here 
these arches. Uh, but that's way out there. Still really can't uh, can't see anything as far as any sunspot activity. But we'll continue to watch that region. Maybe for some height and movement. I doubt it though. Oh uh, goodness. So no major thro um, solar storms headed this way. Aurora forecast very minimal. The weather outlook today brings a threat of a large area here of potential uh, severe weather threats and enhanced area. That includes a little bit of possibility for tornado activity there in the 2% range, the green here on the map. Looks like the main threat today is going to be uh, at least a 30% chance of some damaging winds and some large hail. So if you're out there, make sure you got your uh, car underneath the carport or in the garage somewhere. That's for today. Uh, and of course, thunderstorm activity continues out here along the west. Uh, western portion of the states that includes areas around Redding, Chico. Maybe some may slip down into the valley here today. Sacramento Valley, we'll have to keep an eye on that. That'd be nice to get some more rain. Uh, but that's it. All right, folks, have a good day. I'm going to jump off here and uh, got a few things I got to do today. Some yard work and um, some yard work. <laughs> Just yard work I got to get done. Still got some bull thistle that's probably 10 feet tall. I have to get that taken care of we'll catch you guys back here a little bit later tonight have a good one everyone